My name is Nancy O'Hagan. I'm the president and founder of the Caring for Carcinoid Foundation. I'm a metastatic carcinoid patient, and I started this foundation shortly after I was diagnosed. The mission of the foundation is to discover a cure for carcinoid cancer. The vision of the foundation is to eliminate the suffering and to support neuroendocrine tumor patients, their families, and their friends. Today, we're at the Nebraska Medical Center with three fantastic doctors who are really setting the standard for care for carcinoid and related neuroendocrine tumor patients. I'd like to turn it over to them so that each of them may introduce himself and we'll begin a terrific program today. I'm Jean Botha. I'm a liver transplant and a hepatobiliary surgeon at the Nebraska Medical Center. Um, I've been here for almost seven years now. Uh, carcinoid has uh, is, is not been a, a speciality of mine. Um, I wouldn't call myself a carcinoid expert. Uh, what I would call myself, however, is an expert liver surgeon. And I've been fortunate enough now to uh, deal with a number of patients with uh, neuroendocrine and carcinoid tumors and uh, have been very satisfied with the results that we've obtained in operating and treating these patients. I'm Greg Fitzke. I'm a general surgeon from the Lincoln community. I'm a community surgeon without an academic background. I'm not a carcinoid uh, expert or specialist per se, uh, but we have, uh, through this collaborative effort, worked on several patients with carcinoid, uh, and that's what brings us here today. I'm Mike Zerub. I'm a family practitioner, primary care specialist. Um, I'm from Auburn, Nebraska, uh, which is a rural community in Nebraska, 3,500 people. Um, I also don't consider myself necessarily a carcinoid expert, although have uh, developed a, a great deal of knowledge on carcinoids simply because of uh, the number of cases of carcinoid I've seen in our community. And <clears throat> through that research and the collaborative effort uh, with these physicians, have, I've taken care of a number of carcinoid patients now and, and find myself learning more and more about carcinoid every day. So. Terrific. Well, today is very exciting because of the expertise that the three of you have accumulated through your um, recent patient pool. So I'd like to begin with a general question about how you would treat a patient, a carcinoid patient, and what you would recommend for the standard of treatment for a carcinoid-related neuroendocrine tumor patient. Dr. Okay. Zuruba? Well, the treatment of carcinoid is, <clears throat> as we all know, is, a, is difficult. It's a cancer that uh, in the past has been considered slow very been considered to be a slow growing cancer and one that sometimes doesn't get the attention it needs to and I think that the treatment of carcinoid has to be number one individualized and number two it has to be a collaborative effort between not only <clears throat> the primary care physician but uh, the specialties you see represented here today and, and sometimes other specialties. Uh, as we know, carcinoid has many presentations, many manifestations, and can affect almost any tissue in the body. And so I think it has to be an extremely collaborative effort. It has to be an effort uh, of all the physicians working together and communicating because that's the only way you're going to get the indivi individualized care uh, that these patients require. And uh, so that in and of itself, I think, is the most important first step in the treatment of, of carcinoid. Terrific. And so let's talk amongst ourselves a little bit more about this issue of collaboration, because I think it's such an important one. And it's a lesson that we've really learned here with the three of you, that I've learned a lot by speaking with you um, just so far. Can we speak a little bit more about that? Um, what would you, Dr. Botha, what have you learned about collaboration with Dr. Fitzke and Dr. Zaruba? What I've learned is uh, my preconceived ideas about it have been, uh, have been smashed uh, and the ease with, it, with, with which it can be done. Um, and uh, <coughs> it's, we're in a fairly rural part of the country and uh, uh, me being a, a very busy uh, hepatobiliary surgeon, uh, it's my, you know, the job of calling referring doctors and speaking to them uh, and you know, the usual thing of just sending a letter or making a single telephone call uh, is what normally gets done uh, and not much more than that. Um, what I found in this situation was uh, I pick up the telephone, I make a call or I send a letter and it's only, only to have it responded to within 24 hours or uh, not more than a day. Um, 
things like X-ray has been made available to me uh, immediately. Uh, the, the latest collaboration we have is that uh, I'm able to look at the, the CT scans that these guys order down in their clinic. I can see them as soon as they can see them. We can look at them together. We can be sitting on the telephone looking at the same scan uh, and discussing options for treatment. Um, that kind of collaboration is something which is new to me. Um, it's always been collaborating with referring doctors. has always been something that you've never, you, you don't even know the face of the person you're talking to. In this situation, I mean, I know exactly the guys I'm talking to and dealing with. Um, and it's been made easy f for me, who's a, ver a, a busy uh, surgeon, it's been made very easy for me uh, to be able to, I know that when I call down there, I know that I'm going to speak to the guy that I want to speak to. And so they've done it more than I have uh, in terms of you know, being able to take care of these patients, make decisions, come up with plans, uh, you know, that the patient's not waiting another week to come and see me, sort of, uh, they, they've left a message, I've said, oh, well, make an appointment to come see the patient. The patient doesn't end up waiting. They can have an instantaneous answer because of the way that we've been able to communicate with each other. So I've been extremely impressed uh, with, with what's been made available to me and the responses that I've received. So oh, I can't take a lot of credit for it. I think it's, uh, it's, it's very much been driven uh, from Auburn and uh, it's, uh, it's, I give you nothing but good things to say about it. Fantastic, and this is a great example of <coughs> three different cities. Um, e each of you is in a different city. Dr. Fiske, you're in Lincoln. Dr. Botha, you're here in Omaha. And Dr. Zuruba, you're based out of Auburn. Yet the three of you are collaborating together to treat patients with carcinoid and are having remarkable success in doing so in large part due to the collaboration. Dr. Fiske, Dr. Fiske, what kind of lessons do you think other patients can take away from this? And how would you, what would you recommend to other doctors watching this to create a successful collaboration? Um, I'm actually hoping that more doctors take something away from this than, than patients, quite honestly, from the standpoint of the collaborative effort, because that's exactly what it takes. It, it takes an effort on the physician's part to communicate in a manner that Dr. both the Dr. Zuruba and I have. It's it's very easy to look at a post-it note on your desk saying a physician called and trying to push that off onto one of the individuals in your office to try to take care of it just so that you can move on to your next uh, scheduled item. Um, the standards of communication between physicians um, I, I think require some improvement um, and that's what I've been so impressed with between uh, in this particular situation with Dr. Zuruba and Dr. Both and myself um, is that I've actually learned to communicate with physicians in, in, in an improved manner. Uh, there is no busier physician on the face of the planet than somebody like Dr. Zuruba who's in a rural setting taking care of uh, everybody in the town. Um, Dr. Both and I are both busy surgeons but uh, uh, we couldn't hold a candle to Dr. Zuruba's schedule. Uh, Dr. Zuruba uh, talks to me on a weekly basis, sometimes on a daily basis regarding individual patients and any physician that can take that time out of their schedule to talk about individual patients with a referring physician, well, we, we all as physicians need to take a lesson from that and, and learn that we can take that time out of our schedules as well. So. Uh, from the patient standpoint, you want to find a physician like Dr. Zaruba who's going to take that extra effort to, uh, to communicate on your behalf in a way that, uh, that gets things taken care of. Um, you know, the first patient that Dr. Zaruba and I worked on who is here with us today, it would have been real easy for him to simply have called my office, made the referral. Uh, we would have had her in the office probably within a week or two as opposed to 24, 48 hours, and her surgery potentially could have been scheduled two to three weeks out as opposed to a few days. Um, but the extra effort he took to show that he had concern uh, regarding the situation, he communicated to me uh, what the problem was and that this could not wait a couple of weeks. Um, and subsequently, we were able to expedite things. And, and it takes that effort on physicians' parts to communicate with each other to make sure the patients get the care that they need. Terrific. And so, Dr. <coughs> Fiske, do you think that, and Dr. Zaruba, do you think it's the use of email that has improved the communication among the three of you? Or do you think it's the internet or just the just it's initiative? The telephone. Or <laughs> <laughs> it's the telephone. It's just the initiative and the telephone. <coughs> um, I'm not technologically that advanced with a computer. Dr. Zuber recognizes that when he wants me, he calls me. <laughs> uh, I know how to use a phone, and uh, it's uh, and it's easy to pick up the phone. So. 